Um, one of my latest claims to fame, and it's uh, an important one for me at the moment, is that I'm on the board of Prefab Oz, which is um, uh, the group that's representing the manufactured uh, buildings industry as it gets off the ground in Australia. And um, uh, BGC, CIMC and Hickory are the three groups that we're working with in particular in our research group here. Um, and um, we also have a research group that's involved with the CRC and spatial information that is working on exactly what uh, Michael uh, asked the question about earlier, the idea that we could, could get spatial information into a scenario planning in a very simple way based on GIS information. And uh, <clears throat> um, Roman Trubka has developed a model which is going into the what if software, which will be available publicly and will be useful for any planning exercise, particularly precinct scale exercise where you can do all kinds of what ifs about the development, including things even down to bushfires. So yeah, we've got a bit of work going on in that front. But um, spot the difference, starting with the Egyptians, to medieval when Gothenburg was being built, to now, um, it's not a lot of difference. Um, and so the whole theme behind Prefab Oz that we need to have a 21st century industrial processes involved in the construction and building industry. And uh, that requires digital design, digital control, digital management. And um, that is the transformative force that is beginning to work its way through the, the building industry. But it's got a long way to go. We are less than 3% in Australia of buildings that are being done in that way. Uh, but when they do, it's pretty spectacular. You can go to Hickory's site or BGC site here and see the kind of uh, buildings that are being put together in modular form, very precise. And the people who are working in the industry, like this guy, will have a little iPad in his back pocket. Everything is done digitally. The precision is critical, the design precision. So that you can get these modules and just clip them together. So just down the road in Coburn Central in Perth, the uh, Stella building went up in 11 days. It uh, uh, was put together. Uh, it is a Hickory development and uh, we were involved in evaluating this uh, project. Uh, so what we found, the thermal performance was 30% better, the waste 50% less than in a conventional building because everything is so precise when you're putting it together that you, even the little bits of steel and metal that you, you're carving off as you make the modules can be recycled. The inconvenience is uh, enormously better. Um, basically, uh, you, you take that out of the system. Construction costs were 10 to 12% less and that in, included bringing it over by ship from, from uh, Melbourne. Uh, be a lot better when we have a factory here. 35 to 40% less aggregate funding costs, improved return on equity for investors and higher dwelling yield. Probably most importantly, the strong market acceptance for the modular product. One of the interesting things that came about in the big conference we had this year for Prefab Oz was to see that these buildings are not actually causing the NIMBY type reactions from communities. They are a spectator sport. People line up to try and guess how, how many hours it's going to take to build. Uh, we'll have Tom laying odds next, I think. Um, so I'd, I'd like, to, uh, like to think that it will help us in that whole planning process as we do a lot more redevelopment where communities are threatened, but we, you can come in and slot it in, in uh, very interesting uh, ways that it, it, it really does change things. Uh, these two buildings down in uh, that Fraser's are built uh, just down near the Wacker, they went up in two weeks. Um, so there's, there's a lot happening. 
The, uh, there are six new buildings going up uh, that the Department of Housing are funding uh, to trial. Uh, uh, all of them right next to railway stations, all of them uh, in this modular form. Um, now, I was on the IPCC that, rep that produced this report and um, you read it, you get pretty depressed, but there is a lot more happening now than even we were able to get into this kind of report, which very much has to look backward as it's, it can only use the uh, uh, scientific literature that's been. But the pressure is on. But what is happening globally is that renewables are the most significant investment now, well more than fossil fuels for power systems. You know, they crossed over in about 2009, but the renewables is now more than two thirds of the financial investment of the world going in there. So it's not that hard to see why Obama and, and the Prime Minister of China would shake hands on a deal which made it look like there was significant progress here. All the data we're getting is that it's very much more advanced even than what they're suggesting they're going to do by 2030. We are significantly moving down the track of reducing carbon. Uh, China's decoupling uh, oil and coal from um, uh, GDP. And so the construction industry's response, which has been um, uh, shown in, in all kinds of uh, forums, uh, is that they need to be there. We need to demonstrate you can do low carbon building. This is one part of the equation that's necessary. And the best way to do it is with, with uh, the precision that BIM and the manufactured building industry can do together. So in Europe, this kind of model is the, the, the one where, as was shown before, the car industry showed us how to increase productivity uh, and the, the, the craft industry uh, approach that we have in the building industry still really uh, needs to, to learn from that and create a new kind of open building manufacturing. Now, my work is about reducing footprint while simultaneously improving livability. I think it's the simplest way to define sustainability in cities. We did a project with Arup on basic raw materials, which was, um, it is a big issue in Perth. You wouldn't have thought we were running out of sand uh, and limestone uh, and clay, but we are. And the whole point to um, planning in a sustainable way is that you need to reduce the amount of materials coming through the city so that you can reduce the waste and increase the circular urban metabolism. So we came up with a model which showed how that redevelopment in brownfields or greyfields rather than on the urban fringe, uh, that technology and construction innovation together will produce uh, amazing output. So that's just to show you we really did some numbers on this, but this is what it really looks like. If, if you do business as usual, you can, do, you can still do innovative technological uh, mo modular construction and it will reduce. But the most important thing is if you could do redevelopment with technological um, changes, you can get down to almost nothing in terms of waste. And, and, and that's what's really needed in Perth. We, we cannot continue to just assume we've got a lot of sand, limestone and clay. So buildings like this um, are now appearing around Australia, which are beautiful, and yet they are much more precise and much lower in cost and lower in carbon. And most of all, the, the waste is minimised very significantly. We are now calling it high performance housing. This is Josh Byrne, who is one of the staff members with us. His house in Hilton, it's, a, it's not a modular house, but it's very precisely built and it's carbon positive. It's actually producing more renewables than it's consuming. It's a 10 star house built with $1,200 uh, $1, per square metre and uh, it, it it's uh, the website, Josh's house, has got had 10 million hits on it in recent times because he provides all of that information uh, on the website. Um, 
So construction has got a long way to go to catch up to manufacturing in terms of the, the waste that it produces. Um, and uh, I won't go into these in any detail, but they basically show that we have um, uh, significant advantages if we can begin to get to modular construction um, and prefab approaches that are done in the US, improving productivity, reducing construction costs, reducing waste. Uh, the benefits of BIM are pretty clear uh, as shown before. And um, the, these uh, uh, benefits have just got to be introduced. I, I want to just finish by talking about the, the importance of, of what buildings look like. Um, if you have a, a, a big emphasis on design and, and BIM and modular construction enables you to actually do more design, you can't just go and sort of work it out on the site, um, they, they can be amazing. Uh, when I was in Christchurch last year for a couple of months, this uh, terrible, the, the 185 seats were for the people who died there, right next to this is a new building built in a couple of months by a disaster architect from Japan. It's called the Cardboard Cathedral. Uh, beautifully done, uh, highly designed uh, in a BIM way and, and it's, the acoustics is perfect and it's, it's an example of a new building that uh, can transform a city. If you go to Singapore, most of these new amazing buildings they're doing uh, are developed with these new technologies. Um, and let me finish with this. You will not have seen this before. This is eco-normous. Uh, I, I only found out about this two days ago. Gary Baverstock, the architect, was going to come here. Um, this is 120 metres high and 150 metres wide. It's going to be on the, on the uh, entrance to Perth. The... Uh, you can see what it is. I mean, if you want an iconic building in Western Australia, you've got to have a dump truck, <laughs> a massive one, and this is going to be totally BIM-based, uh, fully modular, exporter of renewable power. Uh, it's going to have apartments and hotels in it. People will come from all over the world just to live in the big truck. So. Um, <laughs> The sky's the limit when it comes to BIM and manufactured buildings. Thank you very much.